My name is Rhys Thomas, I'm a consultant neurologist here at the Royal Victorian Infirmary in Newcastle and a neuroscientist working at Newcastle University. Well, the shortest answer is no. People who smoke cannabis actually have poorer control of their seizures rather than better control, although that might have something to do with, with the people who are smoking cannabis rather than the cannabis itself. Um, we don't really have many cures for epilepsy unless it's uh, a surgical procedure, some kind of brain surgery. And the cannabis-derived medicines are good. They are useful, but for certain people with certain types of epilepsy. When it comes to cannabis medicines, I think it's worth considering them into at least three different camps. There's street drugs, which you don't really know what's in them. You know, broadly, you know what's available on the street, but you don't know what's in them. Then there's the artisanal okay, cannabis oil, which is bought from head shops or bought on the high street. There's not a lot of active ingredients within that. It's sold under a, a health food license. And it's hard for it to imagine it having a strong anti-epilepsy effect because the quantity is so low and it's hard to get into the brain. And then there's the licensed product, which is going to look like a medicine. It's going to come in a cardboard box, it's going to have a leaflet in it, it's going to have a, a foil wrapper, you're going to pop the pill, it's going to look like paracetamol. And so, you know, these three things are very different. And the evidence for the role in epilepsy comes from the medicinal product, the thing that looks like a pill. The standard way when you perform an anti-epilepsy drug trial is to look at what proportion of people who are given the drug uh, have their seizures halved, going from 10 a week down to 5, or going from 2 a month down to 1. And across the board, when you look at that, uh, most anti-epilepsy drugs will have an outcome of about 50% will have their seizures halved. And it's the same for the cannabis-derived drug. Um, but what's really captured the imagination of the children in the press who've been super responders They've had a really bad epilepsy and they've had their, their seizure and quality of life transformed by the medication. Not all of them have received the medicine that we're likely to have access to this year. And so although the future is rosy, it's still uncertain as to how really effective this medicine is likely to be. Yeah, undeniably, they're overhyped because if you go online, you'll find information as why. Cannabis should be given to your dog. Had a single seizure since I began dosing her. The, the evidence is there in epilepsy. And amongst all that hype and all that chatter, we've got randomized controlled trials in the New England Journal of Medicine, in The Lancet, in children who are really hard to do drug trials on. They've got intellectual disability and a, a bad epilepsy. And uh, we're seeing a, a benefit in these kids. Um, and it opens the door to a new type of drug, a new type of therapeutic, if you like because at least 30% of people with epilepsy just don't get the seizure control they deserve, so we need new tools. I think it's really interesting that people could ask that question, because the answer is no, you shouldn't. But the fact that people ask that question tells you a number of things. It tells you how safe people think smoking cannabis is, how socially acceptable it is, how interested people are in trying alternative therapies or parallel therapies for their epilepsy and also how desperate people are for something different, for a different way of treating their seizures, because people have got sick and tired with the medicines that slow them down and make them feel tired and make them feel drowsy. Uh, so the answer is no, but I'm interested in the question.